deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs. Say that again. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, you deserve it. You deserve it. Hallelujah. Can you give God a shout of praise in this house? Can you give him a shout of praise? Can I hear you give him a shout of praise? Hallelujah. 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 Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. I want you to up your hands and give God a dance of praise this evening. Come on, come on. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty Ray. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty Ray. Hallelujah for the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty. Hey, hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty. One more time, hallelujah for the Lord. Can I hear your hands? Come on.
glory of the Lord is coming. Hey, the glory of the Lord is coming. Come on, come on, hear your hands. Come on. Hey, the Jesus, you're my king. Oh, Jesus, you're my king. Oh, Jesus, you're my king. 
Dolere, Lembrada Yakanda, Lembrado Sotodoro, Ina Lakanda Rabrada, Yembrado Sotodo, Ikerere, Endreva Sedere, Lembrada Yarababa, Akarera Mashebrado Sotodo, Ine, Ine, Ikaraba Sotodo, Eva Santa Yarababa, Akarabra, Eva Sotodo. first day of the month of August 2021. Lord, we are grateful. We worship you. We worship you.
Father, Lord, you were faithful in January. You were faithful in February. You were faithful in March. In April, you did not change. In May, you were faithful. In June, your kindness shone through. In July, oh, in July, you were faithful. Father, we return all the praise. We return all the glory. All adoration to you. Thank you, God of heaven. Thank you, God of heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Please be seated. Lord, I ask that you will speak through me today. I ask that the words would make sense and make meaning. But more importantly, that they would bring transformation. Your word is spirit and it is life. Let this word to be the life giving. In the name of Jesus. We're going to be beginning a short series today. And the theme of our series is so is remember. Remember actually. Um, because the Lord said to us in the month of August we should remember. And um, this morning I felt the urge in my spirit to just do maybe a four part or five part um, series. One of the shortest ones we've ever done on the subject matter of remembering. So this is part one. But our t the, the theme for today's message is so you don't forget. So you don't forget. If you go with me first to Psalm 77 verse 11. Psalm 77 verse 11. If you'd read it with me in the King James Version. Yes. If you read it with me in the King James Version, Psalm 77 verse 11. I want this to be our confession through the month of August. Are you there? So read with me. One, two, go. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. When the Lord said to me yesterday, remember. I started to negotiate for favor. And he said, remember. As a young mother, the word why in my mind was the start of a nightmarish two minutes. Maybe I exaggerate. But honestly, I'm yet to come in contact with a mother of young children who likes the word why? If you have an asker in your house, or a child who is a, an asker, I promise you, in two minutes, that child would have asked you why maybe seven times. And you would have felt like they threw you in the pit and told you to climb out by yourself. So, I used to dread the word why. Because why used to just throw up a lot of things that are better left lying down. You know what the expression, let sleeping dogs lie. Why has a way of waking up sleeping dogs? So why wasn't a question that I liked? It wasn't a word that I liked. Now if I didn't like why as a word, it meant that I wasn't someone who asked a lot of questions. You can say something to me, I don't believe you, but I won't ask you why. Because it just conserves energy. But as I began to grow up into my own and who I'm becoming, why has become one of my favorite words. I've come to appreciate knowing why. As I, and as I prepared for today's message or today's word, I was prompted by God that my first point of focus in understanding the instruction to remember is to ascertain and determine what, why, what to say to someone who would ask me, why should I remember? 
But before I begin to answer to you why, maybe we should look at what the word remembering means. Dictionary defines remembering as to remember. <laughs> and they said it is to bring to mind or think again. Remembering is to bring to mind or think again. Another definition says it is to keep in mind for attention or consideration. To keep in mind for attention or consideration. The third definition I have here is that to remember is to recall to the mind by an act of effort. An act or effort of memory. To remember is to recall to the mind by an act or effort of memory. As you will find out as we go on, remembering is not a suggestion that God gave us yesterday. To remember is a responsibility that God has called us to as sons of kingdom. So if you ask me, why should I remember? And I said to you that it is because God wants us to remember. It doesn't sound like I've answered your question. Because everybody thinks there has to be something really deep about the things that we do. And because of that, it is becoming increasingly difficult to convince people in the body that the only reason why we should do what we should do is because God said we should do it. People feel that that's not enough. I need to be convinced a bit more. So give me the seven steps to why I should remember. And I'm saying I don't have an answer. God said we should remember. And by the way, that ought to be enough. But that's never enough. But just so you know that remembering is not something that God suggested as a filler word for the month of August. It is actually important that we remember both to us and to God. As I pondered, I realized that even though what I seek is a deep answer uh, that will end up in the quarters of profound revelation about why God, why God wants us to remember. By discernment, the simple answer is we remember so we do not forget. <laughs> the only reason why you need to remember is so that you do not forget. God is not asking us to remember because we're stupid. And after a while, our stupidity will take over. But he's asking us to remember because life can be complex. Life can be pressuring. Priorities are consistently shifting. And if that is the case, then it means that remembering has to be something we do intentionally or deliberately. Otherwise, we will forget exactly what it is that we ought to remember. If you open to, with me to Deuteronomy chapter number 6. Deuteronomy 6 verse number 12. Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. I looked at that scripture again. Then I went to Exodus to see how God brought the children of Israel out. The Red Sea parted. They stepped in. The floor, the bed of the river was, of the sea was dry. They walked through. Halfway through, the Egyptians jumped into the same bed of the Red Sea. In hot pursuit of them, God caused the water that parted to become a divider. To put a brick like a wall between them and the Egyptians. And they were walking on dry land. The same water, the same, the same water that stood up, up for them to walk through. Or that parted for them to walk through. Was the same water that came together and drowned the Egyptians. There's no forgetting that. 
In fact, if you have vivid memory, it will first be traumatic for you. Even though you are the one that was delivered, it will first be traumatic for you for a number of years. Probably we need to see a psychiatrist. How do you forget something like that? Yet God said, remember, it says, then beware that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. If somebody gave me another phone today, every time I picked up that phone, I would remember who gave it to me. But a phone is not like the deliverance from Egypt. So it doesn't make sense that God will say, he didn't say, do not forget the experience of crossing the Red Sea. He said, beware that you don't forget the Lord who brought you out. Ha. The same Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse number 9. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse number 9. It says, only pay attention and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things which your eyes have seen. And they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and to your grandchildren. Impressing these things on their mind and penetrating their hearts with this truth. The first one in Deuteronomy chapter 6 was beware that you don't forget God. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, it says, pay attention and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget, number one, the things that your eyes have seen and that they do not depart from your heart, but that you will make them known to your children and grandchildren. And it just suggests that remembering by myself is not enough. My children ought to know what it is that I remember. So when God says remember, like I said, it's not a suggestion. But beyond you, there is a need to remember beyond you. If I were the one who came out of Egypt through the Red Sea, the odds are to a large extent I will not forget. But the children that I will have while I'm in the wilderness may not know what that means. So it will take my remembering and my reminiscing, just sitting down, reflecting, and just talking about them, that the children will ask me the questions of, so what happened next? And, mommy, did you die? And I will say, no, silly, I did not die. But it becomes a story that one day, the child will begin to, now the parents will begin to tell their own children and say, my mommy said, my mommy and my daddy, that they were coming from Egypt, that the Red Sea parted like this, eh? <laughs> then their child will ask them, mommy, did grandma die? Say, no, she did not die. She told me the story. It's okay. Isaiah 46, verse number 9. <clears throat> Isaiah 46, verse number 9. Remember carefully the former things which I did from past ages, for I am God and there is no one else. I am God and there is no one like me. Let's walk back again. Number one. Be careful or beware that you do not forget the Lord your God. Number two, pay attention to the things that you have seen and hid in your heart that you may tell them to your children and your children's children, yes? And now he's saying, even the things that I have done that are in history, remember carefully those things. There may have been things that happened in ages past. Remember them because they are proof that I am God and there is none like me. Remember. Remember. There are so many other scriptures where God's express instruction was remember. 
And you'll be like, why do people need to remember anything? <laughs> if you go to Genesis, you will see the account of the Pharaoh who did not know Joseph. Actually, it's Exodus chapter 1 verse 8 to 10. It talks about the Pharaoh who was ignorant about Joseph and the power and the, um, the value add that Pharaoh, uh, Joseph was to Israel. It was that Pharaoh who did not know. And it was that Pharaoh that no one remembered to tell that started the crusade to enslave the children of Israel. When men don't remember, they do terrible things. I've also seen that when men don't remember God, <laughs> as we'll find in Judges chapter 2, after Joshua um, died, from verse 11 to 15, they forgot God. And the result was not fun at all. You will ask me, how does someone forget God? When you fall asleep and you wake up and you can't describe what happened in the time that you were asleep. How do you forget that a God exists? I don't know how they do it, but they do it. What I do know that is that when a man forgets God, and please don't tell me it is not possible, and Listen to my language. I didn't say when a man does not know God. I said when a man forgets God. You said you've forgotten God before. Like, no, Stabi, I've never forgotten. Me, I know they forget God though. If you did not forget God, the panic attack you had last week, you should not have had it. That meltdown you were having two months ago should not have happened if you did not forget God. In that moment, you forgot God. And you thought this whole life is me and myself alone. So the admonition to remember is not for the unbeliever. It's for me. In, in, in Exodus chapter 12 from verse 21 to 28. Exodus chapter 12. From verse 1 to 21 to 28. Exodus 12. Moses called the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and take a lamb for yourselves according to the size of your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. You shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the oil which is in the basin, and touch some of the blood to the lintel above the doorway and to the do two door posts and none of you shall go outside the door of this house of his house until morning for the lord will pass through to strike the egyptians and when he sees the blood on the lintel above the entryway and on the two door posts the lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to slay you you shall observe this event concerning passover as an ordinance for you and for your children forever. When you enter the land which the Lord will give you as he has promised. You shall keep and observe this service. Verse 26 says when your children say to you. What does this service mean to you? You shall say it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. For he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt. When he struck the Egyptians. They spared our houses. It was the eve of the day that the people were going to leave Egypt. It was set. And God said to Moses, tell everybody to slaughter a ram. And they should eat it in haste. If you read it, you say, eat it in haste. Nothing should be left. If you don't have a big household, share with your neighbor. Put the blood on the doorposts and on the lintel as a mark and eat with your loins guard. That's how the Bible says it. Because you are going to have to leave in haste. Because the destroyer, the one who took out 
Every firstborn in Egypt, of both man and cattle, every flock is coming through. So that blood became the um, restraining order against the, key, the, 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 the angel of death. So because that blood was in front of the house, there was a restraining order. The angel of death couldn't enter that house. You will not forget that. When you wake up, your neighbor on this side is crying. Your neighbor on that side is crying. The one behind you, you ask all of them what happened. They say, our firstborn is dead. How can you forget that? Yet God told them, he said, in the crunch, after God said, eat in haste and leave. He now said to them, he said, and please, when you get to the land, you see this thing, it will be called the Passover. It becomes something that you observe forever. Your children must always remember how that I brought you out. God knew that this was a standout intervention. But it was also clear how man can forget. So he instructed Moses to ensure the Passover becomes something that reminds Israel of God's goodness in the time of their dear need. When God does something for you today, your song will be your goodness is running after. Is running after me. And you will sing it. For, it will be on replay if you're like me. For weeks. You will play nothing else. It just takes Nepal not to give you light for a few days. And the same song becomes Why did you abandon me so? <laughs> ah. In Joshua chapter 4 verse 1 to 7, the children of Israel that account was not different from the one in Exodus chapter 12. After crossing the Jordan into the promised land, I talked about this yesterday for a bit. God mandated Joshua to go back into the bed of the river Jordan where the priests were still standing because the priests had to stand for everyone to go across. And God said to Joshua, go back there with 12 men and let each one of them pick a rock out of the riverbed and set up like an altar for memoria. So that no matter what happens, this place becomes where you, and that's why when they would want to do a feast, they want to, in commemoration of their crossover, guess what they would do? They would come from everywhere to that place. Because that memorial of the 12 stones was the conversation starter for those who didn't know God and the reminder for those who had forgotten. He said, set it up there because I don't want them to forget. I don't want them to forget. I don't want them to forget. There was a day that 20,000 naira was like 20 million naira to me. The reality is if I forgot that 20,000 was pro provided for me by the God of heaven. The day that 20,000 naira was 20, looked like 20 million for me. Today that I need 2 million, I am likely to run to man than to go back to God. You need to recognize that pressure has a way of erasing your memory. So God in the Old Testament especially was very um, big on symbolism. He says, put this one here. Put that one here. I don't want them to forget. It became the norm for the people of Israel. Every time a child of God would have an encounter with God that was defining, they would raise an altar. Jacob was the chief of them. Jacob had a stone for his pillow when he was running. From Esau, his brother, and he was going to Laban, his uncle. When he woke up the next morning, that pillow, that stone that became pillow, became a pillar. And he told God, he said, if you bring me back, I'll come back here. And I will sacrifice to you. So when things went crazy at Shechem, God told him, go back there. That was the place you met with me, go there. When he has spent 21 years thereabout with his father-in-law Laban 
and his wages had been changed three times and nothing seems to be moving and he left and his father-in-law pursued him in genesis 31 in verse 45 when they reached what looked like an agreement jacob pulled out another stone he said by the, let this stone be the altar that witnesses that we have agreed that this is the terms of our separation men need to remember men need to remember we do not remember the kind of conversations that people have i wonder if they remember anything People say to you, why are you not frazzled? I'm not frazzled because I remember many things. If I was going to be dead, I would have been dead by now. The mere fact that I'm not dead yet, I have to remember that the one that kept me the last seven times will keep me this next time. It's the reason I'm not frazzled. It's not that things don't happen to me. Because sometimes you look at some people and you think those people, their life is perfect. They have no worry in the world. You are lying. You just don't know that they are not pulling their hair. It's because they know that there is someone called their two for to be okay. He is a dependable God. He is reliable. He does not shift. And sometimes we have to wake up in the dead of the night and remind ourselves that our God, he is God and he's able. So if you, if you have been paying attention and most of the things I've been saying are out of the Old Testament, you will say, oh, it's the Old Testament that remember was meant for. If you go to Mark chapter number 14 from verse 22, Jesus was at the table, the one we call the Last Supper. It was classic. It was the reenactment of the Passover that happened in Exodus chapter 12. And when Jesus began to break the bed, bread and they began to pour the wine, he said to them, do this in remembrance of me. And I'm thinking, can a man die on the cross for me before my eyes and I will forget? But before he died, he told them, he said, do this in remembrance of me. And when I started to study Galatians, and I started to study the new, uh, the, the, um, the, the epistles, the letters, that uh, Pauline letters, I realized why God said, do this, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Because when the persecution came upon the church, the church will forget Jesus. Because the conversation was renounced or die. And God, Jesus was like, you don't renounce. Because when it was my turn, I did not renounce. I went through that death for you. If it will take your life, remember, do this in memory of me. So, I can actually end it here. I don't have anything to prove other than God doesn't want you to forget. Because I have shown you that you have the tendency to forget. If you did not have the tendency to forget, your car, that you did not do anything, you bought a car. Because the Bible tells me it's not of him that will it, it's not of him that run it, it's God that shared. it. The car is old now. Every day you wake up, you hiss. Because you've forgotten that the one that bought the car when it was the latest model in town can still buy a car now. You're hungry. When your neighbor buys a car, instead of you to be excited for them and say, you got a car, I actually like this one. But mine is going to have alloy wheels. And I'm not trying to put your car down. I'm just telling you what God has said he will give me. Instead, you go home and you'll be upset. I'm the one that goes to church twice every week. I'm the one that has not bought a car. I'm not even going again. What kind of thing is that? It's that be. It is hard to get back home. If you had your car, it would be easier. God has not given me a car. The day he gives me a car, I'll consider coming back to church. You forgot. That's the thing that is doing you.
Brethren, I told you that when people forget, they do terrible things. When children of God forget, they compromise. So the one reason why God wants us to remember is so that we will not forget. But for the Oliver Twist them and the Olivias who will not go to sleep today, they will still be worried. Stabi just told us we didn't we, but what about people like us that never forget a thing? Okay, number one. We remember because in the beginning God if you do not remember because he doesn't want, if you don't think not forgetting, if you think not forgetting is not enough reason for you to remember, how about you remember that in the beginning, God, that everything that is your life, whether you're quarreling with them or you are forgetting from start to finish, that you are vexing now that you don't have a car, that you are vexing that you don't have a child, that you are vexing that you don't marry you have not married yet you could have been dead in the beginning god what you have today is because of god so if you are that angry let me ask you can you they ask they say can you make your hair grow one inch more by yourself is a lie. It's not naturalistas that make your hair grow. It is if you didn't, if the follicle is white on the inside, you can't have hair. If you think I'm lying, ask those one who has who have alopecia, whether or the cream. And I'm not. God knows I'm not. I'm just saying that what makes the hair grow is not the ori. It's something else. It's someone. Because he's the one that said, said in his word. He says, I've counted the hairs of your head and not one will fall to the ground without my knowing. So we remember because in the beginning, God. We remember so that we don't forget his mighty deliverances. When the pressures come, the tendency is to think that what you are faced with now is the biggest thing that you have ever faced. I will go back to my 20,000. 20,000, long, long. 2005 was like 2.5 million. If that day that it looked like it would kill me, God did it. He will do 2.5 million today. My, my younger sister has... Um, she has a formula that works. When you say, ah, Evelyn, it's 10 million. She'll be like, ah, ah. Now, one more million naira in 10 places now. <laughs> if you say to her, it's one million naira, say, eh, now 100,000 for 10 places. Now, what's it going to make you shout? You need to remember that he has delivered you before. You need to remember that there were days you had no food. He came through. You need to remember that there was a day you packed your things and we are leaving Potakot. And you were not sure if you would make it. A year has passed. You have not died. You need to remember that. We remember so that we never forget his why. Because sometimes we think God will not do because we have forgotten that he so loved the world. John 3, 16. That he gave his only begotten son. It is the love of God that compels him to do. And because his love does not run out, no matter what happens, he will still do. That's why you need to remember. Remembering so that you hold your peace. Don't be so worried that when the thing now comes, your teeth, you have worried your teeth out of your mouth. You can't now eat the chicken. What's the problem? Remember, he loved and he gave. The fourth reason why we remember is so that we can take the right posture. If you go with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, Ecclesiastes 12, verse number 1. It says, remember thoughtfully also your creator in the days of your youth. For you are not your own, but his. Before the evil days come or the years draw near, when you will, you will say of physical pleasures, 
I have no enjoyment and delight in them. Ecclesiastes 12 verse number 1. He says the part I'm interested in is remember thoughtfully also your creator in the days of your youth. That means that when we get to the new covenant or the new testament when he begins to say that all things are lawful but not all things are expedient it means that who the, he who does not remember the lord his god in the day of his youth there are things that he could have done with god for god and god could have done through him that because he didn't take the right posture he was unable to do them we remember so that we will posture right we remember we remember so that whatever it is he wants to do with us, we are like a hand that fits into the glove. Or whether it's the glove that fits the hand, whatever. The point is, the posture is right for what he wants to achieve. When I remember his promises, They were not sure whether they remembered or not. <laughs> Number five. We remember so that we can return. We remember so that we can return. If you go with me to Revelation chapter number two, verse number five. Revelation two, verse five. It says, so remember the heights from which you have fallen and repent. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking and your sinful behavior. Seek God's will and do the works you did at first when you first knew me. Otherwise, I will visit you and remove your lap stand. This was to the church. But the point is that when we remember, repentance will be easy. You will realize, oh, I have shifted. The posture that I have today is not the posture of that one whom God would walk through. Something has broken in or truncated or interfered with my relationship with him so because i remember i will go back it the bible said that the prodigal son when he came to himself when he remembered he said kai in my father's house even servants will not eat this nonsense i shall arise and return to my father he had to come to himself first before he could make that decision. We remember so that we can return. We remember so our posture and pursuit we align. It's one thing to have the right posture. It's another thing to be pursuing the right thing. But when your posture and your pursuit harmonize, then you are able to move forward. Sometimes the reason why we remember is so that our posture and our pursuit will come into alignment. If you take a look at Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8 and 9. Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8 and 9. Joshua 1 8 and 9. It says this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall read and meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will be successful then in verse 9 always pay attention he says have i not commanded you that is, this is something I have said before. I am bringing you to, the, to your remembrance. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed or intimidated. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The posture is that, um, the, the, the pursuit is that I need to have good success. The posture is be strong and courageous. It is a remembering that makes you take the posture of the one that is courageous, that is bold. That's when you begin to go and you say to yourself, God has not given me the spirit of fear. It, it didn't mean that you were sure. You just know God gave it to you and God has asked you to go. So the posture is, did I not tell you? Why would God have said it to Joshua and he'll be seeing it again? He was seeing it again because he could see that Joshua was shivering and he said, remember 
I told you, do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Do not be intimidated. Just align your posture to the pursuit and let my spirit do the rest. We remember so that we don't break ranks and sin. If you go with me to Psalm 119, Psalm 119 verse number 11. Psalm 119 verse number 11. We remember so that we don't break ranks and sin. Psalm 119 verse number 11. It says, your word have I treasured and stored in my heart. That I might not sin against God. In the King James, it says, Your word, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against God. The word you hide in your heart is the word that you can remember. And as long as you can remember that word, you will not sin. That's one reason why, because if you want to cause trouble, go to like an airport in a cosmopolitan city. And do a vox pop. And the question is, what is marriage? Just ask them to define the marriage institution. And see what I'm saying. You will get 100 definitions and no one, not one of them is the definition. So if, and they have a saying, they say vox populi. The voice, uh, voice of the people, they say, is the voice of God. Uh, do you know some people quote it like it's the Bible? You know it's not the Bible, right? Eh? But when did you find out it was not the Bible? A lot of people quote it and say, after all, it says the voice of the people is the voice of God. Eh? If you do not have it stored up in your heart, they will tell you that that is what it is. Uh-uh, have they not told you? Have you not tried it before something had knocked your head before you realized, ah, what am I doing? The reason why we remember is so that we will not break ranks and we will not sin. Number nine reason why we remember, we remember so our legacy is preserved. That's what we saw in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse number 9. Tell it to your children and your grandchildren. In our house, marriage is a man and a woman. No more, no less. Tell your children when you have them. And tell them to tell their children when they have them. And tell them to tell their children when they have them. Tell them that it does not matter how many people walk with their heads. It's the feet that people walk with. Tell them. Draw them a picture if need be because a day is going to be come and they would no longer find people who walk with their legs. So you show them, when you show them, they'll be like, what are you doing? Why are you walking with your legs? You say, my grandfather drew this picture for me. Can you see this many people? Say, yes, they, they used to walk with their legs. And my grandfather said, walking with your head is not the correct thing. So I'm going to continue to walk with my legs. If you do not remember, your legacy will be messed up. That's why you can't bring civilization to me like that. Number 10 reason why we remember. We remember so we can apply caution. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 7 to 8. Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 7 and 8. Deuteronomy 9, 7 and 8. It says, remember with remorse and do not forget how you provoked the Lord your God to rout in the wilderness. From the day you left the land of Egypt until you arrived in this place, you have been rebellious against the Lord. And at Horeb Sinai, you provoked the Lord to rot, to rot. And the Lord was so angry with you that he would have destroyed you. Sometimes you remember so that you can be cautious. So say, okay, the lines are blurry here. But I think it is wisdom to err on the side of caution. The word of God says be angry but sin not. See this anger, I'm not even knowing whether this is the one that is sin or not. So I'm going to just turn around and I'm going to drink a bottle of coke so that I can fall asleep. (laughs) 
I gave you 10 other reasons why you ought to remember. But the reason why you should remember is what? So you will not forget. There's, it's not work. So that you will not forget. If I Sashala, you were supposed to bring something for me yes, today. Did you bring it? You see, she forgot. If I had sent her a message this morning, she would not have forgotten. Meanwhile, when she entered her car, I said to her, remember to bring it. This morning, I, re I remembered because Nami won't collect, so I, I should have sent that message. So remember, you see why you should remember? And this is not even life threatening. Then God says, Remember, you are wondering why. You will forget. Small breeze, breeze go blow, you will forget. You will not have money, you will forget. You will have too much money, you will forget. Do you know? You don't have friend, you will forget. You have friend, you will forget. You have not eaten. You forget. You have eaten. Say, I forget. I eat and the food there, I can't sleep. I forget. That's why we have to remember. This morning in the workers group, um, Indideka had typed something, had designed something that I had said yesterday. It says, if you remember, I will replicate. Ah, when I saw that thing this morning, it hit me again. And I'm like, Yes, Lord, I choose to remember your goodness. I choose to remember the seasons that it did not look like you were good. But I lived through them and I learned lessons. I choose to remember. I choose to remember when everyone said to me that it would not work. And I have seen you change it all for my favor. Turned it around for my favor. It took many thorns. But that's why you have a scripture that says I will overturn and overturn and overturn. God was not tired of overturning. And in the end, see me, I'm standing here. I remember how can I forget? 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 Can I forget? Lord, I remember. That scripture we read in Psalm 77 was a commitment that was not an instruction it was a commitment that someone made david possibly made and he said to god i will remember i want you to stand on your feet and begin to tell god this afternoon i will remember i will remember and when you read it in the amplified it says i will solemnly remember the deeds of the Lord. I will solemnly remember. Then he goes on to say, I yes, I will wholeheartedly remember. So I decided to check the definition of solemnly and wholeheartedly. Guess what? Both of them mean the same thing. Deep sincerity. He says, I would remember with deep sincerity. I would deeply remember. The word, the solemn is deep sincerity. Wholeheartedly is complete sincerity and commitment. I want you to go to God by yourself. Tell the Lord, I will remember. I remember, oh God. I remember, oh God. I remember, oh God. I remember, oh God. I remember from whence you have brought me. I remember the many waters that should have, you know, swept me away but you kept me I remember oh God I choose to remember I choose to remember I choose to remember I choose to remember Lord it is a commitment and a choice I have made I choose to remember there was a day that I could do it all because you enabled me I choose to remember that day even though today it looks like I'm not able to do it I still choose to remember Church of Jesus Christ it is time that we remembered we should remember we should remember the reason why God has caught such a bad rap left right and center is because those of us who have experienced him do not remember we are running after the next shining object objects that we do not remember that which he has done today is the day the well oasis returns we said Lord we remember 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 thank you Jesus thank you Jesus 
If you have not given your life to Jesus, your own problem is not a remembrance problem. Your problem is you do not know. You cannot remember what you don't know. So I'd encourage you this afternoon to say with me, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Lord Jesus, I give you my life. The rest of us, do you remember? Do you remember? If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Lord, I remember. And I am thankful. Because I remember, I'm no longer afraid. I know that the God that took me through the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth trouble is still the same God. The God in the mountains is the same God as in the valley. I remember that you have done it before and you can do it again. Thank you, God of heaven, in Jesus' mighty name.